my name is Brian and I'd like to uh, share a little bit of information about how you can avoid the use of bulkheads by gluing PVC into your acrylic. Um, what you're looking at here is my 340-ish gallon uh, acrylic saltwater aquarium that I built. I'm still in the setup phase um, and don't really have the budget right now to uh, purchase animals so I have not put any fish or coral into the tank and I'm just letting it cycle and build up a good bacteria colony. Um, the tank is constructed of three quarter inch acrylic on the front and the back as viewed in this video and then the sides top and bottom are half inch acrylic. It's lit with a pair of 100 watt um, light cannons from Ecozotic. They're awesome, awesome lights. I'll just pan up and show them. They are not what this video is about. And when I designed this tank, I, I had very specific space constraints in mind. Um, I, those of you who like to watch my videos may be familiar that I had a 200 gallon glass aquarium. Never could get it to seal. Finally gave up and built what I always wanted. And so let's get to the heart of what this video is about. When I designed this overflow box, I, I built it out of leftover half inch acrylic. So it's it's really somewhat overbuilt. As you can hear, it's, it's fairly quiet. But I had a little bit of a problem with space. Uh, for one thing, this is going to eventually be enclosed. Uh, I'll just back up here so you can see the plumbing. And I was really concerned that it'd be very difficult to get in here and work on the plumbing if uh, I ever needed to remove a bulkhead. So I did some research and decided to skip the bulkheads. And I posted about this on a very highly trafficked website for saltwater aquarium uh, reef keepers. And uh, I had some people that really were nasty about it. So I wanted to post this follow-up video. This tank's been in operation since uh, mid-October. It's the beginning of February, so it's uh, November, December, January. We're, we're entering four months now. And uh, there are no cracks. There are no leaks. Quite frankly, this has been completely trouble-free and very easy to, to work around. And um, I modified a popular overflow concept uh, to work for my uh, situation. So the majority of my water goes through this pipe, which is completely submerged. That helps to reduce the amount of noise. And then this pipe does a little bit of surface skimming. And you can actually see here that there's just a little bit of surface skimming. That keeps crap from building up in my overflow. And then this pipe here is my emergency drain. So if something happens to my other two pipes, the water level will rise and, and it will overflow into this pipe. Um, the key part to this is that my primary drain is tuned with this ball valve here. And then my surface drain is tuned with this valve here. And, um, and then you can see here is the third pipe. This pipe is completely independent. These two merge into one three inch uh, drain. Um, you know, when you're having a tank that's in your house and your filtration equipment is uh, 20, 30 feet away, you really need to pay attention to the hydraulics. There are a lot of well-documented hydraulic studies um, and uh, the flow calculations were right on the border between two and three inches for a submerged drain and, and I realize that uh, there are people who have their sump directly under their tank who experience a different outcome but I'm going to stick with what the engineers uh, and the equations suggest and a pipe with, that's too large um, is usually not the problem in this hobby and pipe's pretty cheap. So before I did this I built a test panel and um, so I wanted to show the test panel and the test panel is not the cleanest joint and um, I experimented with some thinner weld on cement and um, what you're looking at here is uh, a couple of PVC fittings that are bonded into place in a half inch panel I use weld on 16 this is what it looks like and um, I had great results um, it does take a, a day or so to fully cure the joint is not you know museum quality but um, it is watertight and it is very durable. So, you know, anytime you're doing something uh, that is, you know, not the norm, 
it's always a good idea to uh, test it out. What I found was it's important to use a hole saw that is as close to pot, uh, as close to the outside diameter of the fitting as you can find. Um, you want this to be almost a friction fit if you can get away with it. And that means you have less to glue. You, you certainly don't want it to be loose. Um, and then you may have to glue it two or three times in order to get it to fill up. And what you want to achieve is a little bit of a fillet here. Let me see if I can focus in on that. Yeah, I guess it's not with this lens. So, um, you'll just have to take my word for it that if you put your finger here, there's a little bit of a fillet which fills this in. There's not a, there's not a hard gap here. And um, that's what you're looking for. So, what I'm going to do next is show you the other end of this and uh, so that you have an idea of how this interfaces into my filtration. Um, but, you know, before I do that, I'll just pan under here. One of the challenges with a large fish tank is that you end up with a fair amount of filtration. And I did not want it directly under my tank because in the past it has been a real challenge to work on. And this tank is um, in my master bedroom, or what will be my master bedroom, and it serves as a wall uh, between the uh, area where the bed is and the master bathroom. And because it's a private space, I'm not too worried about it acting as a wall between those two rooms. But uh, the last thing I want is something that's messy in inside my house. And um, so I wanted to try and recreate what I've seen some commercial installations where you have a dedicated area for filtration and maintenance. One of the drawbacks to using um, old tanks is that my sump is not really optimized for the way I'd like it to be, so I'm planning to rebuild this sump in the near future as soon as I get a little bit more money in my budget. And uh, when I do, I'm going to eliminate the refugium being way up there and uh, bring a much, much more integrated um, sump design into, into play here. Now, my uh, fish room is um, not the neatest place in the world, but um, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you anyway. I acquired some food grade barrels for water storage and mixing. Um, and I also um, have a reverse osmosis system and deionizing filter for treating my water. Um, you can see here that I use bulk reef supply. Highly recommend them. Great, great group of guys. And this three inch pipe here is my water return. So my primary drain comes up through here. It comes over and drains into uh, a filter sock. Let me adjust my focus there. And then my emergency drain comes up from here and drops in. And um, this is my primary sump. Um, I just kind of angle around here. The idea is that the water will come down and then go up through here. I'll put some rubble in here eventually, and this is supposed to be a space for sponges and, um, of course, filtration is a biological area. This is a deep sand bed experiment that I'm doing, and then this is a mixing bowl for the water return. I've got my heaters in here, and um, this is a protein skimmer that I have for now. I honestly, I'm not real happy with it. It's a good design. I just think it takes too much horsepower to run. Um, I have a manifold that comes off of this. This is a used tank that I purchased on Craigslist for about $70 and proceeded to drill a whole bunch of holes in. Um, you know, even though this, this video is about using uh, PVC fittings in place of bulkheads, bulkheads are essential for working with glass, and this tank has a whole bunch of them. Um, one of the things that's off this manifold is a pump that uh, goes to my chiller, which is located outside, and I'm using a, um, a control system from Digital Aquatics, and uh, you can just see there. And then I have a properly sized refugium, at least in my opinion it's properly sized. That'll eventually be an algae tank for macroalgae, um, and uh, at any rate, this is my current setup. I have about 150 gallons of uh, water out here, and I have um, about 340 gallons 
in the um, bedroom. So I've got approximately a 500 gallon system all said and done. And my, uh, while I'm at it, I'll, I'll show one more thing. My chemistry probes are, are in line and I'm using some fittings. Uh, this is one of the, of the fittings here. And uh, those, those fittings are, um, allow me to screw in uh, uh, to the uh, pipe fitting and allow me to um, put my probes in there and have them stay put. Thanks for watching my video and I hope this has been helpful and, and interesting.